Happy Friday morning. This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. We are starting another FE build. Uh, got a lot on the docket, so um, I try not to waste any time when I can work on other builds. And uh, we've got a couple that are uh, in the holding process right now, so I'm going to jump on this one. This is uh, going to be a 445 based off of a D4TE uh, block. Um, it's going to be a street strip build. And um, uh, we're doing this for Mr. Clint. So, Mr. Clint, here is uh, the, the start of your 445 engine build. Uh, we just received some parts in. Got a set of Molnar. Big block Chevrolet, six, 700 rods. Uh, very stout, very light. These are only, uh, total weight on these are under 740 grams. So, uh, super, super light, super strong. Uh, with a lighter rod and lighter piston, that means that uh, your bob weight is gonna be lighter. Um, good stuff there. We're gonna be checking rod bearing clearances this morning since I have all the parts to do that. And we're gonna be going with these uh, calico coated cleavite rod bearings. The crank is this uh, scat cast crank, four and a quarter stroke. And uh, we decided to go with a cast crank just because um, the, well, for a couple of reasons. The, the steel cranks from scat, um, price difference is mm, about $500. Um, the cast cranks will hold a lot of horsepower and they will hold more horsepower than what a factory, uh, FE block, uh, uh, a top oiler, 390, that sort of thing will hold. The other reason is, uh, the, the steel cranks are actually about 10 pounds heavier than a cast crank. So, um, if it's not warranted, if you don't need it, uh, then I really just don't like having the extra weight in the engine. Um, so the, uh, sorry about that, I was rolling my sleeves up. Um, so the, the build specs for, for this engine, uh, Clint provided me, uh, with a, a pretty specific set of parameters to operate within. Um, he's got a horsepower goal of um, around 575, 580 horsepower. Uh, we want to run it on pump gas, and he was very adamant about uh, having uh, enough manifold vacuum to run power brakes. So that, uh, that kind of presents a couple of challenges for me, which I like. But uh, the, the build, as we, as we see it right now, will feature uh, the factory epi block, this cast crank, Molnar rods. Hopefully the block will clean up uh, so that I can use a, uh, a set of shelf Molle pistons. Uh, those pistons are very light and they come coated. Um, got a, a nice new modern metric ring pack, which I like. Um, the heads are trick flow heads and we are porting those. Uh, so they'll hit about 360 CFM on the intake side. Uh, the intake manifold will be a Performer RPM that will also be ported and modified. And for this particular camshaft, we are going to go with a solid roller. Um, the, the reasons that we decided to do the solid roller, uh, a hydraulic roller that would hit the RPM goals of around 6,600 uh, would have a, a pretty long advertised duration, which kind of poses a problem with making that kind of vacuum that we need for the power brakes and the accessories. So, uh, we decided to go with a solid roller. Uh, I typically, uh, don't like solid rollers for the street. Um, you know, solid roller lifters have, have a, a life, uh, and a street life. Uh, generally, you see, I don't know, somewhere between ten and 15,000 miles on, on a good set of uh, solid roller lifters before they need to be freshened up. Um, some of them, the, the, the better quality lifters like Morel and Bam and uh, the Iski lifters, they will go for, for longer than that. 
Um, but uh, uh, Mr. Clint uh, iterated that uh, this car just wouldn't see that many miles. So it's really not gonna be a detriment to the build, uh, but it will allow us to make more horsepower. It will allow us to uh, have the vacuum that we need and hit the horsepower goals. So that's where we are. Uh, the block is being machined as we speak and uh, I hope to uh, have a bore size here very soon so that I can order pistons. But for right now, we're gonna jump on this and uh, get some bearing clearances checked while I can do that. Uh, I'm gonna wash all the rods, get those cleaned. I'm gonna uh, give our crank um, some cleaning attention and uh, we're going to start checking some bearing clearances. All right, rods are cleaned. I uh, went ahead and weighed little ends and big ends so that uh, when I get the bearings in them, I don't have to pop the bearings back out. Um, I can just write those measurements down and uh, figure up bob weights, mix and match, and, and all that stuff. Uh, so now we're going to break uh, one rod apart. I don't want to do all eight. You guys know that uh, I learned that lesson a long time ago. So we'll do one and check one rod bearing pair. And then if, uh, if the results are where we want them, then we can go ahead and do the other seven. I am aiming for somewhere between uh, two thousand, two tenths and two and a half thousandths for, for this build. And uh, let's see what we come up with. Uh, we're gonna be using my Minitoyo digital outside mic. Uh, every time I pick this mic up or any of the other mics that I use, uh, check it against the standard. Um, we are, <laughs> we are, I would call this dead nuts on. Uh, you cannot measure anything on an engine to, uh, to that degree of accuracy, but we know that we're in good shape. And I'm going to mic the, uh, one five rod journal and record that dimension. Got our teleco bearing stuck in there. Remember, uh, these higher end bearings have an upper and a lower. You cannot mix those up. Uh, Monar uh, suggests for a 7 16 uh, with a 1 600 underhead length, they want 30 pound feet plus 60 degrees. So that's what I'll set my torque wrench to. To check our bearing clearances, we're going to be using uh, my Mitotoyo uh, bore mic. And I set that to the outside mic. It gives me a zero. And then all we're doing is measuring the difference. Two thousand four tenths. Perfect. Uh, on bracket race motors, I like to err on the high side. Typically what can happen is that guys will uh, not get their water and uh, oil temps up when they pull up to to the Christmas tree, and uh, you want a little extra clearance uh, for for that reason. So, two thou four tenths, we're going to be in good shape. Uh, I'm going to mark that dude as number one, and um, we'll go to next rod. And. We are all done. Uh, spared you guys the, the boredom of uh, seeing all that stuff. And uh, it's very monotonous. A lot of engine building is very monotonous. But uh, look at the numbers on the left. I'm shielding uh, customer info just for privacy sake. But uh, crank, uh, journals measured, I mean, within one ten thousandth of each other. So that's excellent. Uh, bearing clearances came between 2.3 and 2.5, which is excellent. Um, and then I've got the identifiers, so I'll know which rod goes with uh, which journal. But uh, that wraps that up. Uh, Mr. Clint's camshaft is already here, so, so are the lifters. We got BAM uh, solid roller lifters for him. Hopefully the heads will arrive soon and the intake and I can get to uh, ordering the valve springs and everything for that, get those assembled. But uh, we're just pressing along. Got a bunch of other FEs coming together, a couple of small blocks. Um, we'll just press on, onward and upward. And uh, I've got a, uh, a new repair on our 
leaking 496 BBM block. So we'll give that a day or so to set up and then we'll try her again. But um, I'll leave you with that. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Uh, this will be probably a three video weekend. And I'm going to start preparing for my um, interview with uh, Keith from Total Seal. I think that'll be a benefit for everybody. If you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to do that now so that you don't miss out on all the cool FE stuff and all the cool precision measuring devices that, that I have. Um, I don't know if I've showed you this. Uh, this is our torque angle torque wrench. Start out with 30 pound feet, then I can cycle through and pull degrees on it and then it beeps and vibrates when i reach the torque spec pretty cool that is uh that torque wrench is several years old it was uh almost 500 bucks but uh you gotta have it for these higher end rods that use the torque angle uh torque specs for the fasteners but uh all right i'll quit john i'll talk to you all later